Hey, hello, how are you folks? It is Friday. It is September 5th. Can you imagine? I think summer's almost over. Well, it is. Well, yeah, I think we've got a few more weeks, don't we? Anyway, Sante Folk Implosion. Chair dancing and karaoke. So hey, hello, how are ya? It is a Friday, and you know it's a funny thing because it's a Friday of a, a holiday week for for us in America who observe Labor Day. Last Monday, but I'll tell you, doesn't feel like it was a short week. No, sorry, Bob, doesn't feel like it. It was an aggravating week for me work-wise. I had a, a few different situations come up, and um. What they boiled down to basically was people not doing their own job and people straying from their core of competency. And this is a thing for me. <laughs> it is a thing that irritates me more than an irritating thing could irritate me. Um, no, there were a couple high spots in the in the week. I did a couple presentations, which of course is part of my job is is evangelization and education of the business into what we're doing in IT, what our strategic roadmap is, you know, how we're progressing with that. And and I will say, false modesty aside, I do excel at it. I'm a fairly good public speaker. And I think I do have an ability to sort of take very complex technical um, concepts and bring them into business language. I wouldn't say it's my favorite part of my job. I certainly don't mind it. My favorite part of my job is when I get to do my job which is uh, I'm actually an enterprise architect and so I design computer systems sort of end-to-end -end for um, companies and I'm very excited about the one I'm working on now because it's the first time I've really been able to get knee-deep into SOA and be able to use a lot of different products I haven't used before and, and also constructs um, like BPM which is business process management we use a software called ALBPM Aqualogic Business Process Management um, it's a terrific tool. Love, love, love it. It It is an amazing tool in a lot of ways, but I think the most distinctive thing about it for me is for the first time, both the business folks and the IT folks are all working in conjunction in the exact same interface, same tool. And this hasn't happened before, right? We used to do, you need your requirements in Microsoft Word, you do your um, business modeling in Visio, you go in then into an IDE or uh, integrated development environment for coding. Um, you go through these things and for unit testing you might go to MQC. Well what this tool really does is bring all of those together and we all work from the same tool. And why that's important is those windows of translation right between those different tool sets are now essentially gone. And that's where misalignment happens. Right? So anyway, there. It's like you work for my company and you're listening to me babble in one of my presentations. So anyway, yeah, yeah, no, I I like it a lot. Um, today was a good one because after I finished it, one of our um, chief detractors, actually, it's a, a person who works in my company, and she's relatively new, and she kind of came in with guns blazing, um, very critical, hypercritical of IT. And, and why on one hand I say it's really not fair, right? If you haven't been around, you don't know the history, you don't know where we're coming from, how can you be so hypercritical? What are you going on? And it's a tactic, right, that a lot of folks will use, and, and I've seen it before in my career. When they're new, if they come in and do that kind of thing, it looks like they're shaking things up, right? Now, I don't know that that was this person's motivation at all. I mean, maybe she really thought, you know, that what she was, you know, purporting was, was the appropriate thing. I don't know. Anyway, suffice it to say, this person's not been a fan of IT. 
and after i finished the presentation this is the second one that i've done that she's been in she sent a note to my c e o which was quite nice saying you know how how much she enjoyed the presentation how impressed she was with me and blah 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 so that was very nice so anyway this little critter this little critter this is flannery o'connor this is my my newest my newest part of the brood flannery can you say hello can you say hello everybody hello she is absolutely a love bug you know and i love cats so much she's my sixth which is getting a little ridiculous i mean i kind of had drawn a line in the sand and said okay five was enough um especially because one of them was elderly princess and sickly and you know, there's a lot of responsibility there's you know not it's not like you just feed them and clean their litter boxes i mean there's lots of responsibility around them and anyway i didn't think i was ready for another one and then someone at work found her and she was a stray and honest to god the poor thing she had worms and fleas and ear mites and dude just a mess so i took her and the fleas were easy to take care of and the worms too the ear mites took a little bit longer that was about a week um but yeah she's she's hale and hearty and i think she's gonna do just fine yes i do and she's just such a love bug honest to be i remember um when Gracie was a kitten, Gracie too was a stray that I, in fact, all of my, my cats now have been adopted from shelters or, or were strays that people gave me. And, um, I was, you know, Gracie was such a loving kitty. She was another one like this. always wanting to be up on you and purring nonstop. And, um, Bridie was a little bit different. And I don't know if that was because Bridie was a feral. She's another one of my cats. And it was actually one of the feral, um, cats in my colony that I take care of she uh, she was her kitten banshee is the feral's kitten and she's fine she's still around and um i don't know if it was because she was a feral kitten that she just didn't seem to bond with me that much and it was quite a traumatic pairing actually she had fallen off the balcony um where her mother was keeping her um outside my master bedroom window and that's amen the shadow you're seeing um and she had fallen in, and it's a two-story house. So it was quite a long way for a little three-pound kitten fall. So anyway, she did have, um, oh, she had a concussion. And they weren't really sure what was wrong with her. They, they thought maybe it was a brain injury and she wouldn't survive. And the vet, you know, later kind of, you know, said to me, Dr. McGee, who's, who's one of my vets, he said, you know, when I sent her home with you, I really didn't think she was going to live. And that was what he said. He said, I really did not think she was going to live. And so that's why I wanted her to go home with you and not stay here and be alone. But, you know, that weekend I brought her home. I got up every hour on the hour and I woke her up and I shined a light in her eyes to check her pupil response. And I, um, you know, got her up walking to check her, her ability to, to walk and her coordination. And we made it through that weekend and, and it was all right. And she's she's hale and hearty too she's probably running around here someplace i would imagine she's the white cat with with the uh, gray spots on her she's a turkish fan she's she's quite a lovely cat but i just didn't bond with her quite in the same way she wasn't the same kind of kitten that that say gracie and and now of course flannery are she was really um she was much more standoffish i would say yeah so that's my brood, and of course, Eamon, who is a Russian blue, and he's quite beautiful, and he's he's so affectionate. I find that male cats are generally more affectionate um, as they get older than females, but he's quite a, a nice cat. He's real sweet. Uh, he he also came from a friend who had a, who had ferals herself, and he was a feral kitten, but she had raised him for a while, so he was pretty used to, I think he was maybe seven months when I took him, so yeah. So, and of course, Providence is the other cat. She's um, showed up on my doorstep literally one day, hence her name. And uh, Princess, I got from a shelter when I lived in New Orleans. So she's been with me quite a while. So yeah, that's the brood, and I am a crazy cat lady, blah, 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 blah. But you know, that kind of stereotype irritates me to know because there's nothing crazy about us, by the way. We just have to be animal lovers, and we just happen to love cats, you know? Um, but I, I will say that I think the... Uh, the six is enough. I'm, I'm thinking that's enough. You going to sleep, Bubba? Huh? So anyway, what else? Well, there's work and there's life. I'm having some friends over next weekend for lunch, so I'm trying to get the house ready. And my house is never dirty, but you know how it is when you have company and you want to do a company cleaning. You know that's different than your every, everyday cleaning, right? And um, 
So I uh, I started that actually a couple weeks back, getting things done. It's some major stuff. I had the window washers in, and and I need to. I don't want to do the floors though till next Friday night because of course with with Ripley, who's my my boyfriend Kim's dog, um, she comes over and then she's a dog, right? So she tracks in dirt and stuff, and it's okay. I never complain. But I just don't want to do the floors and have her hurry over here and I'm all dirty before my guests come. And I have to, have to figure out what to make for lunch. Um, I'm not sure yet. I know my friend Deb is allergic to chocolate, so that's out for any desserts. Uh, and of course, Kim is diabetic. So I do have a recipe for a really great sugar-free cheesecake, uh, low carb too. So I'll probably make that, I think. And then as to the meal, my friend Shell, I'm not sure, um, I think she was um, a vegetarian, but I don't think she is anymore because I could have sworn the last time I saw her and we went out for dinner, she was eating meat, right? What's going on, baby? What's going on? So anyway, um, there's that. So I'm getting ready for that next weekend. Um, it's Greek Fest this weekend um, out at 120th and Mornal, not too far from where I live. So I'm thinking about talking Kim into going. I think it would be fun. I love Greek food and I love Greek dancing and I love Greek music. So I'd love to go. I just, I, it's not my heritage, but it's a, it's a fabulous culture. Come on, it's classics, right? We have these people to thank for a lot. Come on, baby, come up or down. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear her purr, but she's, she's just such a purr kitten. And the first time I brought her in, the, the vet had to actually run the water to get her to, get her distracted because you couldn't hear her heart. She was purring so much. So anyway, well, I've been babbling now for, gee, a little over 11 minutes, mostly about my cat. So this is going to be the crazy cat lady video, isn't it? Yes. Um, so I'm going to get going. I hope you guys have a terrific Friday, a wonderful weekend, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Say bye-bye. Can you say bye-bye? Can you say bye-bye? Can you say bye-bye? Say bye-bye.